This week on Dr. Drew After Dark. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want, cool. you want to touch my hand? Yeah, I do. And, 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 and do your feet get that way too? Really cool. So is this fully nude? Is oh, that... man, you seeing, I mean. Okay. You seeing it's, they passed. <laughs> it's full, full gynecological exam. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, <laughs> just, just, I mean, I'm, I'm doing my best to imagine your dick, right? <laughs> and. Yeah. Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Dr. After Dark, welcome everybody. The number is 818-253-1693 for the voice messages and as always the emails at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. We appreciate it and be sure to support, be able to support us. We very kindly appreciate that and tell a friend. Also, you may want to check out uh, drdrew.com uh, for other pods and drdrew.tv for a streaming show. Not different than this, very different than this. <laughs> different than this. Tone Bell is my guest today. <laughs> Comedian, writer, actor, producer, everything, man. The new series on Netflix, Survival of the Thickest, right? Thick. You said that correctly, yes. That's right, with uh, Michelle Buteau. And uh, you know from Disjointed, that must have been crazy working with Kathy Bates. Well, that was great. We were texting yesterday. Uh, that's so odd, it's right? Great. It's like great. life is strange. Yeah. Uh, and uh, opposite Nina Dobrev on FAM and CBS. Mm -hmm. And the new, uh, it's, I don't know how new it is, but your Netflix uh, comedy special. It's not a comedy, it's not Netflix. It's uh, uh, online. Yeah, I mean, right now I think it's on Amazon Hulu, but it came out on Showtime. Showtime. You know, that everybody has. But uh, yeah, can't cancel this. Can't cancel this. A friend of mine wrote a book called You Can't Joke About This. Can't, I like the idea of can't cancel this. And it, what's the premise? Uh, actually, I it came out before this whole cancel culture came out no kidding and so i called it that because it was i've been on like nine tv shows that have all gotten one season right so I was like this is the only thing i've done so far that nobody can cancel as far as tv goes right and then yours. cancel culture got big and i was like oh my title works <laughs> friend of mine was a common uh he's always like a little guest star on on sitcoms and things and it, he wrote a book called something like "We'll see you next time" or "Thanks for being here." Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. great job. We'll see you next time. It's like it's such so, a it's like, like you know that game is so crazy, man. So it's, you know I've got thirteen episodes. This joining was the longest run I've had so far, like twenty episodes, and they cut that shit too. I, it just seems like that's just the name of the beast, right? Yeah, man. How it works, which is why you got to create your own stuff. Yeah, yeah. So good for you. Did did this all happen to you by accident? Like comedy was something you always wanted to do, or is it? Yeah, I mean, stand-up was, like, was kind of one of those, like, I was doing, um, I mean, I did, worked in, like, improv and stuff in high school and, and like, did plays and stuff, and mm -hmm. I tried stand-up a few times in high school and hosted stuff in college, and then I had a corporate gig for a while. I worked for Anheuser Bush for a long time. Not long, like seven years, but then... Uh, what, I kind, what kind of work? I was doing marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have an opinion yeah. little, little. <laughs> <laughs> about the direction they've taken? In I was there years? before the, the buyout, like the MBEV buyout. I was there yeah. before that, and then uh, that happened like oh nine. Then the culture changed completely, and, and, then, and now it's a part of a huge conglomerate, right? Yeah, huge. Like yeah. every beer in the world is under this one yeah. umbrella. It was, uh, yeah. yeah, it was very different. Yeah. I mean, we used to, actually it was like it was so fun that you're like I don't know how they make money. Like it was, it was very, very fun. Wow. And then, um, and then it changed, and they were like, stop spending money. And I was like, oh, this, I got to go. Uh, and so I left in like 2011. But I started stand up in uh, top of 08. You know, I saw one of these women that were the marketers that made some of the decisions. Oh, that, yeah. That, some, yeah. Of the, some of the contrary. And, and I think their, their heart and their head were in the right place. They were, they were trying something. They were probably given those directions. Like, try something. Try something I, new. I, I wanna, <laughs> like, for some reason, I, I keep wanting to think it was just kind of like, a, like a, a person who followed the TikTok, yeah, and was like, I'm gonna do something cool for this person. Yeah, I thought I, for the whole time I was like, maybe this is what it was, <laughs> and just like, man, I can make you your own can. And then, <laughs> then that TikTok blew up, and I was like, yo, bro, yeah, it. Oh man, I'm trying to figure out how far I should go because I do have some. Uh, things you have some thoughts? <laughs> come come oh, on, man. It's, it's, uh, my neighbors uh, who like self proclaimed rednecks. My neighbors have said some things that I mean I think are. Fucking hilarious. Okay, but, well, it wasn't you that said it. Yeah, it was some yeah. redneck but next door. Like, but no, tip, <laughs> some tip, racist, tip. some sexist, misogynist. <laughs> I just I just realized he he switched beers. Uh, like he's like, man, I've been drinking Budweiser my whole life, and now I can't. I, I can't say. Okay, that. don't I do got, it. I got, no, we, don't I say, I we don't want to get canceled. I can't say. We don't want to get canceled. I got some deals look, going. Look for his next <laughs> comedy special. Cunk's comedy special. There will be <laughs> some some something might get taken out and put yeah, on a clip yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, you grew up in Georgia. Yeah. Anything unusual about your upbringing or? Uh, yeah, man, it's, 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 I mean, you know, South, but, uh, one of my best friends to this day, he, uh, he was the son of, and now co-owns, uh, Magic City. You think I know, is that, you know, you've never been to Magic City? No, what is that? Oh, we got to go to Atlanta. In the South? Atlanta. Okay. Tell me about it. Yeah. It's like the number one strip club. Oh, (laughs) we do need to go. Yeah. Drew, you love those, right? Well, I've, I've been with you guys. So we went to one here once. I mean, but this is, this this, this different. What's that? Because, well, I mean, they're like half. Is it half here or are they, are they butt naked here? They're naked, right? Yeah, naked. Yes. And they serve booze? Yeah. Uh, do they? Yes. I, I, I haven't been here yet. Attention. I haven't yeah, been here they, yet. It's a full deal. Okay. Full Monty here. All right. I still think I can beat that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, think you come, yeah, I think you walk out of there like a, a different man. Uh, are you looking for pictures of this? Is that what you're looking for, guys? Yeah. Magic yeah. City? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The one in Atlanta, I think it's another one in uh, Florida, but yeah, that, oh, there it is, and it's and it's crazy because like you get inside, it's different. Outside is next to a bus station. It, it's it's dangerous. It's yeah, a dangerous. lot of strip clubs are not in the nicest part of town. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's true. Wings, are, wings and the shrimp. But it, so is this fully nude? Is oh that... man, you seeing? I mean, okay, you seeing? Nice. They passed. <laughs> it's full full gynecological exam. Yeah. Oh man, that's, <laughs> like... yeah, you really getting in there? <laughs> you get a whole new experience for twenty dollars. But yes, I mean, I started like my first time in there. I think, I think I was fourteen, mm. and uh, that must have been mind blowing at fourteen. Oh, bro, it's. Uh, and it, How and they then, let you, is, are you allowed in at that age? No, of course it? not. Yeah, That's okay. against the law. Yeah, but like yeah. it was, uh, you, I think we were leaving basketball practice or something, and his mom had to stop by to like grab something, and so she we didn't weren't like all in the club getting dances and stuff, but we were at the front. But could see, cause the place is not that big. It's I mean this this studio is bigger than Magic City. But it's it, you could see everything, and the ladies were so nice. You fourteen, and like I mean, we wearing basketball shorts, like nylon pants, Uh-oh. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was it was it was very like she was like, all right, let's go. I was like, come on, man, we can't stand up. Are you are you crazy? We gonna knock everything over. It was it was wild though. It was wild, wild times. And tell me about the survival of the thickest. It's a cool show. So like uh, Michelle is uh, Michelle Buteau. She uh, she had a book come out a couple years ago, like her memoir mm. and just like stories from you know how she grew up and everything. And so she uh, produced the show, developed the show around some of those stories. So it's kind of like her uh, her letter to New York and like her best friend. So I play one of her best friends that she grew oh, up cool. with. And yeah, so it's just kind of like a it's like a nice you know late thirties New York. How do you survive as like you know a thick girl in the city, single and and you know, is, is trying to get her shit together? A period piece like set in the nineties, early two thousand. No, no, it's current. It's current. Current. Yeah. And, and how did you end up in Austin? Man, I got tired of flying back and forth from LA to New York. And in the last like f- couple of movies and TV shows I did, I wasn't, uh, they never shot in LA. And so I was like, man, let me get the fuck out of here and, and uh, save some money and then have less than three hour flights everywhere. And taxes. Oh and my, that. what? Yeah. What? I know, right? I mean, I almost kissed my account this February. It was, it was beautiful. California is a shit show. Oh, bro. It's, I mean, I, and I love the city and I love the people. But I mean, like they, it just wasn't working no more. Yeah, financially, it doesn't make. And any I still got sense. a place I go back, but I'm, you know, I don't go back as often as I. Well, I was part, always gone anyway. What part of town are you? In? Studio City. Yeah, well, so it's like it's a, just sort of centrally located, nice part of town. Yeah. yeah, not too bad with the homeless. Where were you at when you, Pasadena? I'm, I'm still there. You said, okay. Yeah, you I, I'm doing the flying back and forth. Oh, dude, I can't do it, man. It's hard. You got a Burbank? If I can, but they've stopped some of the flights to Austin. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I'm going to LAX, and I, and I go to New York a lot, so I'll just I'll just keep going across okay. when I get here. So yeah, I mean, I just I don't know that six hour, five and a half hour flight all the time just really it threw me off. I couldn't. Yeah, you know, and then the, you know touring, and then you know sometimes the the routing ain't right, so you know I'm going from Seattle to fucking Tampa. Do you miss then, Georgia? <sighs> Magic City. <laughs> <laughs> we, I'm gonna have to go there. With you. Like, this is a date, man. I mean, my, I mean, my parents are there, so yeah. I mean, I like, I like going back, like, seeing our friends and stuff. I don't know, man. It's like I just, it's one of those been there, done that type type things. And I've lived in like seven cities, so I mean, I, you know, I've, I like to visit real quick, and then then I'm out. Do you like what you're doing? Love it. Yeah, I love can it. Tell. Yeah. I love yeah, it. Man. Like you feel blessed. I mean, yeah, I lived in Dallas. I lived in San Francisco. I lived in Miami, New Orleans. Uh, you look old enough to have lived in all these cities. Man, I am 56 years old. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> it's like, dude, but it's tell crazy. everybody that. It's crazy because you know, I tell everybody that. It's very impressive. <laughs> I feel like you almost believed me for a second. I did. Like, I did. I was like, wow, <laughs> shit. Like, black people can say anything about age. White people is like, man, I got to take that. I believe it. Absolutely. <laughs> it was like, man, that is good genes. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> oh my god, that's too funny. I want to see a playback of your eyes being like, yeah. "Holy shit!" Yeah, it's like, yeah, I always thought so, man. It's like, but this guy's got it wired. Drinks coconut oil. <laughs> it's really funny. Well, what we do here is we uh, do a bunch of emails and calls and live calls and uh, voicemails and watch some videos, things like that. Let's take some uh, voicemails and uh, kind of uh, break it in a little bit here with Tone. Hey, Dr. Drew and the Boot Boys. I'm here to ask about um, this patch of skin on uh, the back of my hand and wrist. It, um, it's a couple shades darker than the rest of my skin. Um, it kind of comes in like a splodge. It's almost like as if you painted it on with a sponge. I don't know. Um, and basically, there's hair growing from this area. Like, I have hair on my arms, but it's that blonde kind of you don't even really know it's there kind of hair. And this stuff is considerably darker. Um, but as the years have gone by, I've noticed the area it covers is uh, it's bigger. Maybe it started off out as a uh, two-inch area. It's kind of grown to like a four-inch area. And so I'm just worried about it spreading further. Is it just something I have to deal with, having one arm that's hairier than the other? Or is there some way I can kind of stop and mitigate the spread? Uh, thanks. Bet I'm coming up in May. Well, uh, very exciting question, but I'm just looking it up. There's a name for this, and I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But it's essentially a, a you know, it's a mole, congenital nevus. It's a pigmented area, and they can be hairier for sure, and they do not go away. Uh, and it's just one of those things. It's something called Blake's. So there's a syndrome associated with it, but uh, I would not worry about it. It's not a big deal. I mean, I don't know, man. He said it went from two inches to four inches. It's not like you need to worry about that shit. Well, that is the other thing is that sometimes these pigmented things can have tumors within them. You can get melanomas, things like that. Uh, and if it really turns black and spreads, yeah, yeah, get it checked out. And if it is spreading, it's worth getting checked out. But I probably, it's probably nothing, frankly. Is that something? Is, I mean, all right. So all right. It's, like, it's not cancerous, probably, but like, would you? Very would you, unlikely. I wonder if he puts a watch over it. Yeah, just to, yeah, just I'm sure he's gotten all those sorts of techniques over the years. It, 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 the way he describes it. I don't know if I've seen it before. You've seen that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. He describes it as though it's unsightly, but I bet it's not as bad as he feels it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So. Do you have medical questions? You have. Uh, I might. I don't chance. know. I mean, not yet. I mean, but I. I, I... Here's one from inside uh, the organization. You guys can guess who who uh, sent me this one. Somebody from in house. Uh, I have a strange skin thing that developed after finishing five days of antibiotics two months ago. When my skin is scratched or rubbed, even if gently, I develop an allergic reaction. The skin gets really. This is all skin stuff now. The skin gets really red, rich, red, itchy, and swells up like hives. Lasts for about 30 minutes, goes away completely. After researching, I'm pretty sure it is dermatographia, which is what that's sort of what you're describing. Mm. Uh, I take Claritin, it gets a little bit better. Occasionally it will flare up badly if my cat scratches me or I bump my skin against something. Cat scratch, does that narrow it down at all? Cats, important. Mm. Somebody's life. Yeah. Uh, also called Kebnering phenomenon. It's just allergic. There's just allergic hypersensitivity. It, it, why it would happen after the antibiotics, I have no idea. That's kind of bizarre. Uh, oh, I do have a question. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, well, I do have a skin thing. I, that kind of sounds familiar to me. I don't deal with cats like that, but I do get like, I don't know. Of course, I'm looking at you. The, the, you don't I, have I, I got else. none right now. But let's go to the one I can do. Man, my hand's always cold. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want, you want to touch my hand? Yeah, I do. And, 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 and do your feet get that way too? You're really cold. Yeah. yeah. They are really cold. And I'm not cold at all. My, yes, my feet do get cold, but I wear socks. But, you know, it's not... If you put your hands in the refrigerator, do they get turn get like white or blue? No, no. Does anybody in your family have rheumatic diseases of any kind? Or rheumatoid arthritis, anything of that nature? Not that I know of. This kind of thing is called a Raynaud's phenomenon with vascular constriction. That's all right. I always, I always say it wrong. I would said this on stage once, and a doctor came up to me afterwards, told me that's what it is. Yeah, Raynaud's. but then my GP back uh, in LA was like, "Is your nose cold?" And then I go, sometimes, not as much as my hands and my feet. Yeah. But uh, it's like, it's uncomfortable. Not yeah. for me, but, you know, when it's time to... Touch somebody? Yeah. So she doesn't like it so much. Oh, man, I got to warm these bitches up. <laughs> so do, what do you do? I sit on them, which is... <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which is very... It's like, give me like, give me like six minutes to warm these hands up, and that is not sexy. No, it takes, yeah, I get it. It does take, it takes. Either that, maybe the like cold touch. You get I mean, some, it's, it's and now it. if, it's, if it's warm, like she'll, you know, she's, yeah, if yeah. it's too hot, she's like, take your cold ass hands and, and cool me <laughs> off. 
and that is a that's a feature that that she likes. But man, isn't that interesting? It's uh, it let, will, let me it, see your nail beds. Real it will quick. ruin. I got good ass nails. Yeah, but I mean, you got nice pink. You know, there's a lot of blood flying. To them. It's just that's just you, man. I know, man. Interesting. Do you ever do you ever have other that technically it's sort of an autonomic symptom? Mm-hmm. Do you have other things where you get lightheaded, or if you change position quickly, you get palpitations, or you know, you faint when you sort of move around quickly? Not really. I mean, like I I do get palpitations every now and then, but that's not. I don't think. Nothing like no, that. Nothing else. Real. Nothing else. It 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 it's a it's a thing. It's just you. Yeah. But it right. does go along with this sort of Ray Nose type phenomenon. So here is something uh, from Vanessa. This is a live caller. Vanessa, go ahead. Hi. Hey there. What's up, Vanessa? Um Oh, hi. Not much. Just uh just here in Denver. Dr. Drew, so excited to talk to you. Um Back in December, you were on Guy Benson's podcast and gave me a shout out there. So we're full circle. Wow, that's weird. Small world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not to be creepy, but I do have a brown question. Mm. A lot, a lot of shit. Urine. Oh, is that what we call them? Brown. brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, okay. ahead. I'm, Go ahead. I'm following. Yeah. Okay. So I was talking about this with a friend the other day, but we were wondering if food that you eat, if it takes about eight hours to then come back as brown, how come after certain meals do you have to like violently shit sometimes? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, we do know what you're talking about. <laughs> we know what it means to take a shit. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so, Black people call that lactose intolerant. There, There is a lactose what? phenomenon. <laughs> Heavy creams and such. Yeah, they, that'll move things through very quickly. Mm-hmm. However, you're right. It, it does take at least eight hours to move most things through. But it, it, this is something I brought up a number of times in the show. It's something called the gastrocolic reflex, which is certain things in the stomach stimulate the colon. Uh, and so you're having a gastrocolic reaction and there are certain, uh, foods that also increase the contractility of the bowels. You know, there are things that are sort of like what, like, uh, like hot foods, you know, I, citrus, stimulus, caffeine, Chick-fil-A. caffeine, a st- Chick-fil-A <laughs> evidently in her case. <laughs> so, is that the, the spicy Chick-fil-A or any Chick-fil-A? <laughs> It's not breakfast Chick Fil A. It's always lunchtime Chick Fil A. Interesting. Well, that's interesting. So <laughs> sounds like you did your research. <laughs> but it is. It is uh, maybe. <laughs> it is not. But trust me, it's not the food that was consumed that's coming out the other end. Typically, very hard to do right. that. It takes takes even when you take these. You ever had a, ever had a colonoscopy? You know, you're I'm not. I'm, you're I'm over 56. 50. Of course, 50. I've had a couple now. So, so, <laughs> um, but they give you these very powerful laxatives. Even that takes like three or four hours to get going, and that's what's moving through you then. All right, Vanessa, good to talk to you again. I'll tell you what I do. Uh, good luck with that, Vanessa. What do you do? Um, if, if I know I really need to go, like this is, I got to get yesterday out of me. Yeah. I uh, Lemon water, cup of coffee, and a banana. Whew, 20 minutes. It's a pretty good combo. 20 minutes. Pretty good. That, that's mostly the caffeine, though. It's, and I wonder if it's the something about the lemon water with the caffeine that's caught. I don't know. Interesting, interesting. Gentlemen, of course, first impressions matter. If you're not taking care of your skin, that is going to be the first thing people notice. Either either way, you look older than you are or maybe like you don't care. Show them that you do care. Make a first great impression with Caldera Lab. Caldera Lab creates high-performance men's skincare products, and the regimen leads off with their product lineup, a twice-a-day routine to transform your skin. Caldera Labs knows that skincare is a heavily female-driven world, and it's long been the wild rest for men. That's why they're making the solution simple. The regimen includes three products, the clean slate, the base layer, and the good. The clean slate starts and ends your day. This is a face wash that leaves all skin types refreshed. The base layer is your daily moisturizer to hydrate your skin, jumpstart your day. The Good is your go-to multifunctional serum at night that helps your skin look smoother, as well as helps reduce some of the thin, the fine lines. Caldera Lab is the leader in men's skin care and made only with top-tier ingredients, and clinical trials have found 94% of men's skin showed an overall younger-looking appearance after using Caldera Lab for a few weeks. And just for our audience, we have an exclusive offer. This is their best offer available anywhere. Go to calderalab.com slash after dark for 20% off right now. Again, that is calderalab.com slash after dark to get that 20% off and make unforgettable first impressions that lead to those charming words. You look younger. Calderalabs.com slash after dark. What is HelloFresh? Well, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, affordable. Susan is a great cook. 
tends to overbuy a little bit, but not with HelloFresh. She loves doing it. Our son was doing it as well. He impressed himself because it is easy, and that's why it is America's number one meal kit. Fall is right around the corner. HelloFresh is here to help you plan for the busy season ahead. Tasty dishes delivered to your door. Simply choose your recipes and pick your delivery date. Lay back then and enjoy the last days of summer knowing dinner is covered. Key to dinnertime success, variety, and HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 chef-crafted recipes to select from, and that is every week. From family-friendly to fit-wholesome, you will find something that it's good. The vegetables are good. The, the proteins are great. And this fall, maybe you've got places to be, and standing in the checkout line is not one of them. Leave the meal planning and the grocery shopping to HelloFresh with pre-proportioned ingredients. You will save time. You'll cut out the hassle. Of course, when life gets busy, don't call for delivery. Get HelloFresh. It's 25% cheaper than takeout, less expensive than takeout, less expensive than grocery shopping. Just choose your recipe and receive fresh pre-proportioned ingredients so you can get cooking quick. I want you to go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Dr. Drew. That's five zero, the, the numerals, 50 D-R-D-R-E-W. Use code 50 Dr. Drew for 50% off. Oh, my goodness. Now, now there's no excuse. Plus free shipping. Again, HelloFresh.com slash 50 Dr. Drew, 50DRDREW, and then use the code 50 Dr. Drew. It is America's number one meal kit, and at this price, you will not be sorry. Trust me. We'll stay, we'll stay with the brown topic here. Let's stay, you know, talking about shit. Why not? Uh, Anthony, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Uh, so my question is like, my question is pretty simple. Uh, so when I notice when I wake up in the morning, if I take a shit, Probably like say within like fifteen to thirty minutes of waking up. Stay with the shit like here. Nine times out of ten, Go nine ahead. times out of ten, it's going to be like quite runny, quite watery, like mm. a type four, type five. Mm. Uh, the longer I wait, the like if I take a shit, say two hours later, it's like basically the longer I wait, the more solid it gets. Hmm. And mm. I was just wondering why that would be. And uh, let's show the let's show tone the scale that he's talking about there. Like this a, is the, it was actually a shit scale. Anthony, what'd you say? There's a there's a it was like a four or five. Yeah, I'll show you a four. And or those five are good. And, yeah, type four, type five. I, I looked at the I referenced the scale like there on it is. Oh boy, the, a type four, waiting. type five is what you want. Things I've never go It's the Bristol stool car chart. Let's get it up there. There it is. Okay. Okay. All right. Type four, five. So four or five are pretty solid, right? Yeah. It's not. It's not five. Maybe not I'm a, mistaken because uh, I was trying to just say it's pretty runny. Like more like a six, huh? Hmm. More like a six, then. Yeah. Uh, it, hard to know. I mean, I, I, I again, it's not after you drink coffee or something, right? Nah, dude. This is like really. I've I've kind of played with my diet a little bit. I've like uh, tried to cut out milk. Tried to cut out coffee. Nothing seems to really aggravate it or like. You know, do you drink alcohol at night before you go to bed? That's alcohol? Fucking, that's fucking chart. <laughs> not so much. I mean, it, not really. Well, I don't if have I, a good answer for I you, my friend. If you drink alcohol, it'd probably be a lot worse. Yeah, I, I don't have a great answer for you, except that uh, during the day, for whatever reason, usually things move through better, but in your case, it seemed to reduce the movement through it. Maybe you're drinking less fluids or something during the day, or all the fluids are consumed at night. I don't know. I, I don't have a good answer for that. It's... Uh, I don't spend a lot of time thinking. It, maybe that's why I didn't go into gastroenterology. I don't. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about stool, and yet we talk about it here all the fucking time. Hmm. This is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I can't stop looking at this chart. This is yeah. This is oh man, I, Drew. I have a question for you. Mm. So uh, I just recently started getting a little bit more active, and um, I never messed around with pre-workout, but I just learned. A cup of coffee has like 30 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah. And pre workout has like 300. Yeah. Does it make you shit in the oh, yeah. of your workout? Caffeine is a is a very powerful mm. laxative. Or not laxative, like stimulant. Di diuretic, diuretic? It's not a diuretic. It just, it just stimulates bowel contractility. And so it'll stimulate a movement, quite literally. So yeah. if you take pre workout, should you try and shit before you work? I mean, out? if you don't want to get interrupted. Are you doing coffee and? No, he's uh, just doing that 300 milligram oh, caffeine. Like, that's like a bad combo. Yeah, the pre workout's in there. Mm. Yeah, I again, you guys, uh, I don't spend so much time thinking about my shit. I haven't asked you one question about shit yet. I want no, you to remember not, that. Not yet. I, I'm remembering that. Uh, Terrence, what's going on? Howdy. Hey, man. Uh, Dr. Hitler, shalom. Long story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> go, go, go ahead. What's up? 
Um, so I have an interesting little case here. Uh, I've, I've had my penis for about 27 years now. Good for you. And it was, thank you. Um, proud of it. And it, it wasn't until about maybe a year ago, I was just playing around and looking at it. And I discovered that, um, I, I think they messed up my circumcision mm-hmm. when I was a wee lad. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a little, flap of skin that is from the shaft to the tip of the penis. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to see. I've never had partners bring it up to me before, but I could literally run a Q-tip through it. Hmm. Um, It's like a, it's like a built in uh, piercing. Mm. um, So like I could literally just put stuff through it. It doesn't affect. I, I, and is it, is it run side to side, like horizontally across the penis or is it run run along the, the long axis? Uh, the long axis. Oh, that's interesting. So it makes me wonder if it was like some sort of hypospadias. Show us a hypospadias so I can tell what that is. Hi, this is actually a common thing that men, when they're developing, males, male f- babies, they the, the uh, urethra doesn't often, also, many times, more commonly you think, doesn't make it all the way to the tip. Mm. It, it comes out somewhere along the way there. You see it can come out down there by the testes and okay. come out mid-shaft or it can come out where at least close to where it's supposed to be. And sometimes those are sort of, they sort of close up and it makes me wonder if it's hypospadias. The other thing is you can get weird scarring from, particularly if they use cautery where you, where you had your uh, circumcision and there can be kind of weird scarring that happens sometimes. So it's not really messed up so much as it just happens. It just happens. It just yeah, happens. Yeah, you know, and like no, no pain or anything. Never anything it's leaking just a, it's just out a of cool it. Trick. Anything yeah. ever leak out of it, like urine? No, no, thankfully not. Okay. Uh, Do you I ever be throwing down two I streams got, I at got a once? Question. Go ahead. Tone's nervous. got a question for you. Hold on. But I mean, I'm just curious. Go ahead, Tone. Yeah, man, I got a question. Um, when it, oh yeah, please drop I it. Mean, just, just, I mean, I'm, I'm doing my best to imagine your dick, right? <laughs> and. Yeah. Absolutely. The, I'm still stuck on the Q-tip. Like you could fit a Q-tip through it. Yeah. Now, have you ever embraced it and and put accessories on it, dress it up a little bit, like actually do put a yeah. put a ring through it or something, and just like use it. I I have a septum piercing. I'm so tempted to just put it in there just for shits and giggles. Yeah, why not? That's just a good surprise no, sometimes. I, I usually don't do it for uh, partners because I'm just afraid that it's gonna make them afraid. Uh, you gotta own that shit, man. Yeah, it's kind of scary, you know, having that uh, some like metal just hanging out down there. I don't want it to get snug, snug on anything. Yeah, that would not um, be good. I mean, changing underwear. But, uh, when- yep. All right, I've had enough of that. Uh, so- <laughs> I'm thinking about accessories. I'm- <laughs> I know, I know. You can. That's good. Let's decorate this. Here's shit. an email. I'm a 35 year old straight white male from Kentucky. I've always dated and been attracted to women. But I experimented with men a handful of times oral. I found that I'm down to uh, for oral sex, but it means getting my dick sucked, but I'm not attracted to men at all. Also, I found that I have to perform first because I'm uninterested after I ejaculate. As long as they orgasm before me, I'm good. But after I ejaculate, uh, I'm no desire to do anything. What the hell is wrong with me? Uh, also, am I being a tease by letting this gay dude... <laughs> am I uh, there, here you say? go this here we go yep. also am I being a tease by letting this gay dude eat my ass knowing he's never going to get in there no matter how much he licks it so what is his question what the hell's wrong with me he's not straight no I mean he's leave as uh, Adam used to say at least half mo <laughs> 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 at, at least right and people debate if that even you know what that means right uh, he's he's certainly Seems to be so. He, so he he is he don't date dudes, but he lets dudes blow him as long as they come first. In other words, if once he's once he's had an orgasm, he's no longer interested in, in the partner. Right. But so if he can get them off first, then then he can. No, wait a minute. So he just giving out handies. No, he blows them. He's oh, he doesn't like it though. He doesn't like. He, no, he likes it as long as. He does them first. As long as he hasn't come yet. Yes. Once he come, he has no interest. Oh, in. he can't blow after he blows. He, right. Right. No blow after blow. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's. I mean, to that just sounds own. like kind of a normal dude sometimes. Uh, I feel like some dudes are just like. That. He sounds a little. I mean, 
if he does get a female partner, he's going to have to serve it. Well, whatever, if he, his, this is my thing. You correct me if I'm wrong, Tom. But once, if you're going to get in a committed relationship that's monogamous, you got to, you got to pick a major. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Your yeah. female partner is not going to dig this as a part time pastime, yeah. regardless of whether you're into guys or not. Let me smell your breath. Like it's, it's going to be a lot of that. It's going to be bad. Or if you have a, if you decide you want, you find a male partner you want to stay with, he, men are a little more tolerant, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it sounds to me, and this is probably a terrible diagnosis. It sounds to me like uh, he just really likes blowjobs and he's yeah. willing to blow to get blown. Yeah. And he probably sounds like he has a tougher time probably getting blowjobs from women. Maybe. So he's like, man, I, that's how much he likes. I know it. a bar. Uh, interesting. So men are just more more cooperative. I mean, you know, we, we don't need all the wine and dining. And you tell me what you like, and I we done. just get shit done. Done and done. Here's a birth control question. It it is different. You know, it it's. I, I was talking to uh, again. This is another Corolla thing. I, was I don't know. If, I mean, I love blowjobs, but I don't think that much. Yeah, not interested. But but it, well, I was either way, gay's good. Gay's good. Yeah, of gay's course. Good. Gay is of course good. But I w- I was talking to Adam Kroll again about uh, that Samantha character in Sex in the City, and I was like, ah, you know, I talked to the woman that wrote the original Sex in the City book, and she said that that character was a sex addict, drug addict who died of drug addiction. Mm. And I went, well, yes, that's that's who that is. Mm-hmm. And Adam said, oh no no. She that character is what a gay man would be if he were a woman, and and okay. I thought, oh, well, a gay man writes Sex in the City, so that's he's right. I mean, that's that's not how women right. are. Right, they're not quite like that. Uh, but a gay man, were he to be a female, that's exactly that's what, how yeah. that's how he would be. Uh, my fiance stopped birth control in December. Has had only one period in February. We're now in April. She's taken four pregnancy tests. How long till it reaches normalcy? Um, usually at six months, people are back menstruating normally. Ooh, shameful fantasies. Uh, let's see. I've had this fantasy of being forced to wearing women's clothes, wearing makeup, and then being pegged. I also fantasize about sex with um, male to female trans women and sometimes being forced, again, more like talked into, to perform bisex acts with men. What do you make of this so far, Dr. Very Freud? niche. Very niche. Niche, but but the fact that he's out of control, he's being forced into it, suggests that maybe this is something he secretly harbors, but can't sort of Bring allow, himself. allow himself. Yeah. He has to be yeah, yeah. forced into it. Uh, my wife was shocked and disgusted when I told her. She brought some lingerie for me to wear, though, and a strap-on has been very supportive. She has started to show a true desire to mildly feminize and dominate me. I guess the big thing outside the bedroom, I'm very masculine. I build and ride Harleys, drive 4 by 4 shoot guns. I'm a Marine veteran. Am I gay, bisexual, or a normal guy that likes kink, taboo sex? This is actually a great question. Oh. <laughs> is, it, is it wrong <laughs> to want to relish control and be used by my wife and trans women or sometimes men? What do you say? <laughs> he's done it all. He does it all, right? He's, he's, he's done it all. Yeah. You got to keep exploring. Oof, who knows where this is going? I, look, man, <laughs> Marine... Bikes, builds, pegs. Hey man, give me a, give me something else. Yeah, this, I'm with this dude. This dude, this dude, this is a human being. Hey, this, 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 this like guy's living. Give me another task. <laughs> so here here's really what I what I would say. So he has a wife. Love it. I this love is it. back to picking a major though, right? He's got yes. a wife. So thankfully, and how she, honest is this dude to for the, to for him to tell her? And the, how great is she to start to participate? She's like, hey, yeah. he keeps he keeps it. Yeah. No, this is awesome. This is actually awesome. That's so, a good relationship right there. So here's the problem. Here, there's, there's only, here's the, so, so these are all deep fantasies that he's obviously, you know, is having trouble bringing into consciousness. The wife is into it now and helping him with it and letting him act out all these fantasies. Mm-hmm. The only sort of, and good, good on you both, go, go at it. The only problem is, is this the beginning of a more complete transformation? Yeah. And he's going to have to really kind of think about that and, and struggle with that. Because sometimes when you dip your toe in, you go, you, you keep going. You, you don't pull it back out. You, like, yeah. which is which is real, right? It's really in him. It's not that he's uh, sort of going down some some path that he should never right. have opened. It's not that at all. It's that this is in him, and we don't know where it's really going yet. The fact that he's exploring it. But I, my sense is it's probably going to stay in pegging, dominating, because dominating is a big part of this for him. That's what. Well, that's my question. When you see stories like this, cases like this, is this? Does it normally go 
further? Or it can. Or it does people kind of. I, I don't think I can generalize. It can. It doesn't feel like that's what this is. Okay. Uh, but it's interesting that he sort of has compensated the other way, where he's a man, man, rides the Harleys and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Maybe there is, but maybe this is enough to to massage that part of it. I like so the communication speak. between he and his wife. I love it. I'm a big I love fan it. of that. I think these these two get uh, the couple of the year award. Good for them. Uh, and and uh, he he said, let me answer his questions. You are not gay. Uh, you are not bisexual. You have a wife and you are committed and you seem to be fine with that. Am I a normal guy that wants kinky taboo sex with a taste for the wild side? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, pretty I mean, much. That's what it sounds like. We'll see, right? We'll see. And Tony and I are wondering, is this going to, will you continue to open up other interesting feelings and ideas? We'll see. You got a, uh, oh, I never had an orgasm. Is this a female? Yep. Never had an orgasm. Well, let's uh, say the voicemail. What? <laughs> it, it's a long question. I'm not sure I want to get into it yet. But sure. But if it had been a male, I would have been like, "Well, oh, this is fascinating." Hey, Doctor Drew. Uh, this is Josh. I'm um, calling in about. I got a weird thing. I've always wanted an answer before. Sometimes, usually, like first thing in the morning, if I go get, you know, maybe something salty or it's yeah, usually salt again. will do it. There's like a underneath my tongue on the right uh. side. It'll kind of flare up, Get and it sore. almost feels like there's a like a bunch of gravel in there. Mm -hmm. And every time I swallow, it really, really hurts. Like it cinches down on it. Mm. And I've always wondered what the fuck that is. It is uh, why you're getting that inflammation of the tongue. Those are actually the taste buds swelling on that side. I don't know why you're getting that inflammation necessarily. Whether it's an allergic type reaction. Probably allergic, I suspect, mm. uh, uh, or just a vascular permeability that's triggered by the salt. But I don't think it uh, anything you should be paying any attention to other than maybe paying attention to the things that uh, cause it and avoiding them because eventually it can, it can swell up kind of badly. You can start biting on that side of your tongue and stuff. It can be kind of a, a cycle you can get into, it seems to me. Also, like, stop eating that. Salt in the morning. Yeah, avoid it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, avoid the things that cause it. Now, I have a peer of yours. He's 56 years old on a little video oh, here, yep. uh, and he's a virgin. Let's see what this video is. Hey, everybody. It's the 56-year-old virgin. Today is my birthday. I'm actually 56 today, and I'm celebrating with some of my good friends, Kevin, uh, Janet, and Pam, and I can't do uh, it. Screw it. I'm sorry. There's Kevin. He's one of my friends. Hi. Here's Janet. Say hi, Janet. Hi. Those two are married. He's a little cranky, hi. though. And there's our friend Pam. Say hi, hi, Pam. They treated me to pizza and pretzels. What more could a man ask for other than a date? Quite a crew. Bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. Go ahead, Tone. I mean, that's a squad right there. That is a squad. That is that is a squad. That's hey man, you got to surround yourself with like-minded folks. That, that's a squad. Like-minded, indeed. And by the way, that guy says he's fifty-six. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what a white dude looks like at fifty-six. I couldn't help but to look at his collar, like the collar on the shirt. I, that, it was, Let's get it back. Oh, look, look at, at this. That. I look mean, that's like dude. a polo or something. I mean, one side going in, other side flared up. <laughs> and he's got like a coat on. It's like a almost a seersuckery kind of thing. Oh like no! A, what is that? A that's vest? all part of the shirt. It's a part, it's part of the shirt. shirt. Oh man! Was he like? Did he go? Oh, screw it! I'm he's sorry. not a bad looking cool dude. No, either. he's not. But he's odd. Oh, and uh, well, he, he tried did, to switch the camera angle. Was it the he couldn't bring the camera around, or he ran out of time, or that he couldn't remember everybody's name? I think he was getting scared because oh, uh, you're talking about when he goes from himself to looking at his friends. Well, he yeah. starts introducing them, and he goes, "Ah, shoot, I can't do it. We don't. We're not clear what that was." I don't know. I think it was he was trying to flip the camera. That's what we think too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he couldn't figure that out. Kevin, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Janet, and Pam, and I answer? can't do it. Uh, no. I'm sorry. There's Kevin. He's one of my friends. Well, hi. Here's Janet. Say hi, hi, Janet. Those two are married. <laughs> He's a little cranky, hi. though. And he's there's the our friend the Pam. Say hi, hi, Pam. They treated me to pizza and pretzels. What more could a man ask for other you know, than a date? Look at the elephant bag, handbag she has. I mean, I these are that. all children. Well. And I'm, I'm sorry. That's probably a little rude. I apologize about that. I mean. There may at, be that kind of developmental stuff going on here. Okay. Right? All right. Well, so I diagnosed it correctly. Maybe. I think there may be the case, and uh, it 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 reminds me of uh, some of the 
whack pack that Stern keeps around him. Mm. You know, he keeps some mm. interesting mm. folks around him. And um, so, do you think? Do you think they drove hearts. there? They got driven there. You think they on the road? I don't think so. I think yeah, Pam. That's in a the real back question, there. by the way. Yeah. I'm like, who, no, I, I'm with you. How'd they question? get there? I think Pam in the back maybe be the driver. If there were a driver, it'd be her. She's like the most responsible. Kevin had some motor issues. You okay. Notice he okay. wasn't moving very much. Right. Uh, his wife, she's not driving. Man, <laughs> she better not get behind the wheel. Uh, the Virgin, I don't think. He, he might be driving, right? He could be, but he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be driving what other people. What more could a man ask for? I don't think he would drive other people. I mean, who's to say they had to drive, right? They might live right out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or there may be a if if they're not in the tent outside. They look a little clean for that, by the way. Uh, Did they? Yeah. Those teeth, huh? Everybody had interesting mouths, didn't they? It was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody did. Yeah. I think I think we have a new category. We have the talk eyes. We have all these different sort of categories of cool guys. There, you know, cool guy. You know, there's it's just a subdivision of cool guy mouth. I think is what that is because you know, cool guys all have a certain teeth, d- yeah, dental, yeah. dental sort of uh, vibe. <laughs> <laughs> can can where do we come up with the cool guy mouth? Was that the guy the singing? Me. Out, that, was cool that? guy mouth. That, that's all you, man. Yeah. What do you mean we? This is not an us thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've mentioned cool you guys their mouth the before, guys. haven't I? You like strip mouths. clubs, not us. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that happens to me is your asshole's fault. You know that. Look, we might have helped you get here, but you're now you're uh, you're acting on your own now. All right. You're Let's see some TikToks. <laughs> Speaking of. Speaking of that. Oh, my God. So Christina collates some TikToks, and uh, I worry what goes on in that mind, but here we go. I'm going to see this <laughs> in fast. It was <laughs> a cut of the wood, and it was used for a long time. It was a good one, but it was used for a long time in the medical field. Thank you very much. Blood? Yeah, the, you just tapped something on his forehead and a stream of blood's coming That out. is odd. You guys didn't do that in doctor school? N- we've No. And what I don't understand is he's got something around his neck. Yeah, just, he's like choking himself to get yeah, the blood, to get the blood up there. What the fuck? Man, wow. I, wait, play that again. You got it. <laughs> he just thumped it? I wish I knew what he was saying. Did anybody speak Arabic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just released it into the into the thing. To this painter's tray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's on the other side. And look, look he's the twisting he's the towel. He's twisting it so his, his, his neck is constricting. <laughs> There is a there is a vein that goes right down the middle here. It's it's not easy to see, but I guess when you're you're choking to death when you're being asphyxiated. Uh, you know, oh yeah, I, I I get upset that vein. You can see that vein yeah, show yeah. up, yeah. And so he knows how to enter that vein and get it to release. I don't know what in the name of hell he is doing. I don't even kind of know what this procedure is. Yeah, what he's supposed to be. I'm, I'm guessing it's a headache procedure. That's Man, what if he's doing that for a hangover? Oh. That'll get your attention. I mean, what if <laughs> what if he just like had a night and he was like, bro, I can fix that. <laughs> you got you got six minutes? <laughs> Let's drain that shit, bro. I got you. Bring a trash bag. I got you. Bring a trash bag and a washcloth. And a tray, I got you. And a tray. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh man, it's better than throwing up. That's all. Uh, okay. You can't think of anything that this could possibly fix. I, I'm betting people get desperate head around headaches. They get desperate and they do weird shit. So I'm guessing it's a headache thing of some type. Either that, it's or it's some um, religious, spiritual cleansing of something. God knows what. Uh, not anything therapeutic in my world. Woo! I like a, too much blood though. Well, it's under maybe a lot it's of the pressure. sound, but it looked like a lot of. Yeah, blood. I agree. But it, it, it's a it's a decent vein and I don't know interesting all right what else you got good one what that's it she she throws us one that's that's all she's got there's so many of those videos out there why'd she pick this one I think this is slightly different than probably the ones you've seen Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is sanctioned by uh by Dana White a lot of them aren't the stuff I see and so is there something weird about this yeah, th- that is happening. And by the way, uh, Louis J. Gomez called me out of the blue and asked a question about doctors getting 
uh, HPV from burning off warts off the penis and the smoke getting into their nose and causing HPV in the doctor. And <laughs> Joe Liss was with him. And I think it was Joe that said, uh, confirm that, that is true, and I get to slap Lewis as hard as I want. So a lot of unsanctioned slapping well, going on. Well, don't leave us <laughs> hanging. Did what? I have to stay with what I know to be true, and I've never heard of anything like that. Mm. So Aerial HPV? Great question, but uh, never heard of that. So You couldn't just do it for the boys, though? I, I thought about it. It was tempting. Believe me, it was tempting, but I, I have a... Which I hand have, would you go with? You, you, which hand? If I were to sla slap uh, Lewis? Yeah. Right hand. Okay. Yeah, my, my shoulders are fucked up on the left side, so I couldn't, couldn't give it a good one. Uh, well, you got any more TikToks for us? Yeah, I got a couple more. All right. I designed my own Christian activewear brand. My biggest flex is representing Jesus in the gym. Well, good for her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you ever watch 90 Day Fiance? Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do, actually. You seen it lately? No, not lately. There's a chick like that, a girl like that, who is extremely hyper-religious and found another hyper-religious Catholic in uh, Israel, except she's like a nine and he's like a three, mm. and antics ensue when they meet, you can imagine. Oh, all right, so. I'm going to go back and check. Yeah, my, yeah, that's a show me and my mom uh, talk about often. I haven't started this new one yet. Though. No kidding. Who are your favorites over there? Uh, I've never had that this conversation on this show before. No, I mean, well, she'll talk about it, then I go back and watch it. And so, like, I mean, I think it was the... I mean, what season are we in now? Because we watched it. I only three, know four, by who the who the couples oh, are. Oh, so I probably can't name any couples. Okay. But like, she'll tell me, and then I go back and watch who she tells. I've me, so. I've actually interviewed uh, Angela, the big bigger woman from the south that had a uh, lost yeah, a yeah. ton of weight yeah, yeah, and had yeah, yeah. surgery. She's actually quite quite interesting and funny and lovely. I think they're um, all great people. Yeah, I also interviewed uh, Julia from Russia. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Julia, I do remember that one. Yeah, <laughs> I interviewed her. I interviewed her because. Uh, I wanted to talk to somebody about the Russian invasion and okay. how a Russian would feel about it. And she was very forthcoming and said, like, this is bullshit. It's fucking, nobody should be doing this. We, we all hate it. And that was at the beginning of the war. I don't know how they feel now. But, yeah. And, uh, and I'm going to speak to Yara and Jovi in a couple of months. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, Ukrainian. Yeah. That, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them, but this Val, talk, this is my mom. Val talks about them. <laughs> I mean, she talks about them like she... The, the fact that I watch it is the symptom of how horrible a uh, lockdown was. Oh. Because that that's what I started doing, watching shit like that. The, the, uh, that one and then the First Sight. That's the two, that's, those are the they two we talk first, about. Love, love First Sight yeah. and then um, yeah. 90 Day Fiance. People love that stuff. All right. Uh, let's get some more live calls in here. Let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, hmm. What do you got there, Miguel? I don't know if I can take a slap in the face for her. Hey, I'm how sorry. you doing? No, I know. Hey, Miguel, what's happening? Uh, not much. Uh, so basically, I went to my PCP uh, for a doctor's checkup, yeah. and I basically told him that I don't sweat, mm. and he didn't believe me, and he actually had me run laps around his office to prove it. Mm. Do you not sweat anywhere? Does your forehead not sweat, your ass not sweat, your hands not sweat? Is there anywhere that gets a little wet? Not really. I mean, the best thing that happens to me is like, listen, basically like a vampire from Twilight. What is it? That shit sounds sexy, bro. <laughs> so not sweating is not sweating. <laughs> are you are your bone dry where you can't pick up paper and that kind of thing because your hands are so dry? Yeah, I have to lick my fingers to be able to pick stuff up. Interesting. Well, people have the opposite, right? Where they literally drip sweat from their hands and mm -hmm. can drip from their forehead. So it makes sense to me that some people might have the contrary. The problem is that to maintain temperature homeostasis, we really need to use sweat evaporation. Yeah. We, we use that a lot. Uh, so I, I'm trying to understand how your body dissipates heat. Are you, are you able to, does your, does, do you get hot and overheated really easily? Yes. And then you can't cool down? Um, it gets to the point where I basically can't do nothing to the, like for the entire day. Because when COVID was going around, I ended up catching COVID. Mm. And it seriously just felt like my entire body was shutting down for how hot I was. It's a little bit different. 
but but in the in the sweating, the sweating that usually comes after fever is how people kind of cool down. But I mean, it happens. I, my bet is though that your scalp or your feet, or your hands, or something is is doing the sweating, and that you know there are actually procedures to help move it around your body. Believe it or not. I feel like I've seen that. Well, I'm probably only in the opposite, where like someone sweats too much, Correct. and then they the glands or you know they, whatever. They clip the ganglion at the, the sympathetic nerves along, you know, proximally to wh- whatever region it is they want to dry up. Like if it's a if it's a hands, they'll sort of clip a thing in the neck here. If yeah. it's the forehead, they clip something here, and uh, it works. It works. But then people notice other parts of their body start sweating. Their ass starts sweating. Right. Other things sweat. So usually it's somewhere, but some people are Ooh. different that way. I mean, and you've just, always been like that. You've never sweat. Like even playground, school, growing I've, up. I've always, I played baseball and out in this Texas heat, like I was out with my kids just the other day and it was 108 and they were all sweating and I'm just bone dry. Oh man, people and hate you, bro. It's also weird that like when it comes with that, I don't have a BO. Your superpower. Oh, so you say you don't, you don't have to wear deodorant? <laughs> You're bragging. Yeah, bro. Like this is you out here cloud well, chasing like, right now. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you though get overheated? Have you ever had heat stroke? Have you ever been like, in a situation where the ambient I've temperature, had ex- I've had, I've had heat exhaustion. Yeah, easily. I'm not surprised. Yeah, so you got to be careful. That's all because this is an inefficiency, but it's uh, just genetic. It's you. I why I don't know, but uh, it's one of them things. I got heat stroke. I did a thing out in the desert for Fox Fox. You know, I did this uh, special forces thing. We, we they took us out to the Jordanian desert and trained. Had a bunch of Navy SEALs train us. Yeah, I was in the hospital very quickly. Uh, how hot was it? 120. <sighs> It was, it was, it's, that's a kind of hot that you don't even like. Yeah. You, you don't sweat because it evaporates so, so fast. So quick. So yeah, quick. It's really just. Long. I'm exhausting. I mean, there, there are those, I mean, I'm from Georgia. So like, you know, Texas, Louisiana, you yeah. know, Alabama, like it's, it's so the, the moisture's in the air. So, you, you know, you get that 102, 105. And then I'm just thinking about your situation. Cause I go, man, it's a hundred after that. And that kind of humidity you're pouring. Like, yeah. you, I mean, you can't help, especially if you're standing yeah. in the sun, like you're getting that heat plus that that uh that humidity and like I I'd, I'd be so jealous looking at you dry yeah I know, it's true I would too I'd uh, be pissed all right we got some, give me uh maybe we got a couple more clips to look at let's, do you have any more voice messages before I go to the clips yeah all right hey doctor mommy um I'm a 31 year old female multiple orgasm um, by penetration and squirter and I just wanted right. to ask a question about my would be wife. Um, So sometimes when I come, it is full-on square liquid. And then other times, kind of depending on the stimulation, it's more like thick. And I'm just wondering why that is. All right. Thanks. Bye. Great question. So, you know, women are all over the place with their sexual orgasmic function. Sure. Right. Some no no orgasm with penetration. Some sometimes. Some every 30 times they steal the orgasms from everybody. The squirting is probably the the this the squirting is probably a couple of different things. One is urine. Urine can come out and that's been well established. Mm-hmm. But the other is women actually have glands around the vagina that when you look at under the microscope are identical to prostate gland. And prostate is what produces the semen, right? So women can also in certain situations and certain genetics produce a semen-like fluid that will come out also. So it's 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 Probably some is urine, and probably some is this, you know, glandular material producing that, uh, yeah, the thicker stuff. That's so what I would have said. It's good times. The I mean, I'm trying to get my girl to to let it go, to to squirt. Yeah, she like I me. Mean, she accidentally for her. She's like she's she's embarrassed by it. Oh, the, uh, I'm like it, back it. before people were talking about it or seeing it on porn. People used to be terribly ashamed of it. I go give yeah. it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, men let's like change, that. Man. Let's change these sheets. No, you know what man, I mean? like, we like we like we like evidence of our work. Yeah, I want a receipt. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, because you, I can feel it. You know what I mean? I can, I like, I, you know, she probably hates this. She gonna listen. This shouldn't be mad. But like, <laughs> and her We're, mom, her mom gonna hear this shit. Her mom look at everything let's I do. Be her clear. mom, we, we, are, we, it's, it's, it's a talent. Yeah. we admire it. It's, she knows you should, she, be, <laughs> you should be honored for being a such. <laughs> <laughs> she knows she wit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Kevin Samuels. Now, what's that all about? Yeah, oh, we, we yeah. have a video. Oh, you know who he is? I do. Who is he? Uh, no, uh, R.I.P. Uh, he passed away la- uh, t- about a year last ago. year. Yeah, yeah, last year. Okay. Uh, 
relationship guy, like a oh, like yeah. a call in. Oh um, yeah, yeah, I know who this guy is. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fan. little harsh, a little bit fan. harsh. I'm a fan. Yeah, we can wet your palate and show you one of the old ones to kind of. <laughs> yeah, let's do it speed. by all means. Winter is coming. No more hot girl summer. No more twerking. Once you're over 35 or 40 years old, what do you have? You got bad knees, bunions, and type one diabetes. <laughs> I like the way he calls it tramp talk. I'm five three. How much do you weigh? Oh, I remember That's this. That's none one. of your business. I told you I was fat. Oh, okay. The, the, we don't play that shit on my channel. <laughs> you get your big fat ass on somewhere then. I don't deal with you big sassy ass broads. You think you can get out here and be like Danny's big ass? Go knock yourself out. But I would be remiss to try to tell you, as an image consultant and as a person and a professional, that you can be five three and weigh so much that you don't even want to tell somebody how much you weigh and think you're gonna get a man to marry you, a high value man. So you go ahead and go on back over and get your two piece or three piece or whatever you got coming from, you know, Chick Fil A or Popeyes. Or, yeah, carry your ass on over. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. oh, I miss him. Here's the new one. Wait, wait, wait. What happened to him? Why did he die? Uh, he died. Of what? He died. Uh, I, for I don't really even know. Was it a heart attack or something yeah, like that? Heart like, attack after I think fucking one of his ladies. Or no, seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was what fifty something, early fifty. Oh, good. He, yeah. mm, good for him. Anytime a woman gets cheated on, a woman tells me my man cheated. My man cheated. I always ask you, how'd you find out about it? And you know what the answer I normally get. Now he's starting to get, well, the woman he was cheating on me with contacted me. And I said, what did you say? Because I told a lady, told two women last night, here's what you should, you better go listen to old school Betty Wright. Here's what you should have did. When she called and said, yeah, you know your husband? Yeah, we having a relationship. He, Girl, oh, is that you? Is that what he be doing on Tuesday? Girl, thank you so much. Appreciate it. By the way, uh... Thank you for taking that off my plate. And, oh, do, do you do you do you tickle him behind the ear? Cause he likes that too. Oh, by the way, he likes his he likes his meatloaf red, not brown. Thank you, girl. Matter of fact, we should go out and have some coffee one day to exchange stories. You know how many women call women like that back? None. I what's he getting at? That he can get information out of her if he befriend if you befriend her? Well, it's not cheating if she know about it. <laughs> But 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 <laughs> remember that Tuesday night you wanted to yourself. Oh, now you got this it. This is where I'm at. Oh, so she really happy so is taking it off the plate. I don't have to cook. You out. Uh, I got the house right. to myself. I watch my programs. Oh man, I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying I was breaking that down for what he was saying. I, I hear. Do you have any more of his stuff? I I remember. I I. I I have a different feeling about him right now watching it that he's just so damn funny. Yeah, let me look. Dude, he's hilarious. hilarious but I used to feel bad watching some of his well, stuff. Like, he was so harsh. Well, you know, I mean, it's context. and It's hard for me because, like, when he kind of came out, um, he was kind of like, uh, you know what it was? It was kind of like drinking a Bud Light now. <laughs> mm. Like, if you drink a Bud finish, Light now, finish that like, thought. I'm going to have to do this alone. Oh, I see. Even if I still really want to drink it or if I want to enjoy his content, Okay. I got to do this and not tell other people I'm doing it right I, now. That I was get just it. The, and then later people it. go, oh, man, there's some things like he really had a point on. But I'm like that because my dad wrote a book when I was in high school, a relationship book when I was in high school. And he's, I mean, he's a civil engineer. He's a, he was, a, was in the military and just kind of wrote his thoughts as a dude growing up where relationships and marriages are going. And every, t every five to seven years, I'll read it. And, I mean, my dad is fucking spot on. What, what? Give me some headlines. Um, I mean, just like, just I guess, just kind of how you, your wants don't matter to me as much as your needs. Hopefully, we can get to your wants. Yeah. Like as a as a what my job as a man is supposed to be. Yeah. I I want to listen to your wants, but I got to get your needs down first. And and we this is your dad and your mom together. Yeah. And 40, they stayed four years. They stayed together forever. Yeah. And, and so he's seeing. Really she hates the book. <laughs> it's fantastic. She hates it. The title is A Husband's Guide to the 21st Century, but it's written for women to be better wives. That, that's literally the take on it. Uh -oh. And it's crazy. Uh-oh. It's crazy. Is he still with us? Yeah. And what does he think about the current the circumstance? Oh, he thinks we got it hard. Like you, guys my age. You got it difficult. Yeah. Because women aren't following his advice? 
Uh, just I mean, well, no, not his advice. Oh, my dad. Mm. Oh, no, he didn't never really push a book. He just wrote it to have something out there. Like he never like you know went to conferences. I mean, I think he did. But, like, but, I, but I'm guessing that the, his advice has not been followed. I'm guessing that things have for gone, me. It, it, I, you it has. have. I get it. Yeah. But, but I'm guessing the world has gone astray in his eyes. Correct. Mm. But I've heard, I've seen him talk to like have debates when I was growing up with you know other couples and stuff, and everybody seemingly agrees. Not about his advice, it's just like they all kind of agree. Well, it's kind of like this guy's advice. He, he's he's just reporting what he's heard. Correct. But he reports it in such a way that it's offensive and Other, troubling. It's and, and harsh. It's harsh. It is harsh. It's harsh. And and I, I feel bad, except weirdly looking at it today, I don't feel as bad as I have maybe a week or two. I don't know, but I like harsh. Ago. Like if I went to the doctor and like they uh, tell me harsh. I'll tell you straight, tell but me, not harsh. Yeah, I don't need the tact though. No tact. Yeah, but th- th- this is this, yeah, is, this is tactless. Tactless. Yeah, for sure. But it, but it's it's intended to land harsh, right? Yes, and it's a, and it's efficient. <laughs> but but it, you're cor- uh, correct, correct, correct. However, there's a certain group of people that are not going to hear it and are going to run away, oh, hurt 100%. and offended, and so you're not 100%. helping everybody. That's what bothers me. All right, there's a clip up here entitled "Pussy Worshipping." So we need to know what that is. Is that our friend I I I? <laughs> no, hold on Uh-oh. for one second. Please don't laugh like that. You scare me. No, it's good stuff, man. <laughs> oh, that's I, I don't know why you're so afraid. Here it is. It's you guys. That's why. I'm... All right, sorry. That yeah, that's uh, that clip for some reason is not opening. But uh, here's another fun one that I think you guys right. might like. What the hell? What is going on? So they got thrown out of a club by a bouncer that I think they thought was a dude. And ah, then they were like, I see. You can't touch me like that. Ah, I see. Like, you insulted I women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. I like that. Sorry. I'm sorry that happened to them, but it's pretty funny. All right. Give me another one. I'm going to punish you with, for more always. TikToks because you've not you know, delivered the pussy worshiping video. Here, you know what? Here's something pussy adjacent. <laughs> This is why you should never go down on her. I know you love to eat. I know you're a okay. cookie monster, you f-ing liar. You're doing it because you want to please the girl. A lot of guys, the reason why you claim you love oh, eating no, box so much no. is because you're doing it because you want this girl to hopefully give you some booty if you do a good enough job. And women can sense that. There's a form of scarcity attached to why you're doing it. You're not doing it out of abundance. You're not doing it just because you enjoy it so much and she's reciprocating the energy. You're only doing it because you hope she give you some booty. You hope she lets you smash if you eat the box. You're a sucker and she probably still ain't going to let you hit. Well, what if you hit the box after the booty? What's his theory then? I, I You yeah. don't disagree with him? <laughs> So, so he, it's an he, appetizer. I'm trying to get to the meal. He, I get that. I totally get that. I don't that. know why he's mad about it, though. Right. And and if you're doing that to a woman, pretty much everything is going to go down, right? I mean, that's a lot of women feel that's even more intimate than, than having sex. Yeah, this is how... This is how now, step I, one. It reminded me, though, of... Uh, I talked to a Jamaican guy once, and he was telling me that just... They will not do that. And, they get, and when you talk about... you know, the, And the women around their period... Wait, what year was home. this? It's a while ago. Oh yeah, is that, is that no longer? I the think thing? it's had to change. It's changed. Yeah, but they, I heard though that the thing around the the um, what do you call it bias around women menstruating is still there. Like you can't you don't get around a woman she on her period. Don't, don't get near them. Don't 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 get oh, in there. Wait, is that not true? You can do whatever you want with them in their period. It's messy, but you can do whatever you want. Really? Mm-hmm. The only the only thing that you worry about medically is that it's a little more open so infections can get up higher if you have something that you're going to give them hmm. but if there's no infection going back and forth then it's not it's a nothing but but a dude can get anything no really no that's interesting but she's just using that as an excuse now see no i'm not gonna tell see. her <laughs> <laughs> cut this part out i can't let her watch this part <laughs> 
Is he your, you guys married? Or put, that, put, that, put that shit on the put on the put it behind a paywall so <laughs> so she had to subscribe. Is he is he girlfriend or or what? Uh, probably probably locking it up soon. Just just a uh, just Good girlfriend for. right now. Congratulations! Yeah. I d- definitely want to meet this woman. <laughs> oh, dude, she deals with a lot. I'm 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 a mess, man. Really? Like what? Well, you know, being a comic, of course, you got to be able to. So it's, and she's or... very uh, she's very. Um, don't take this the wrong way, but inexperienced in a lot of stuff. Uh, so I'm her first experience in a lot of things. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, I mean, just even traveling. In a, I mean, she's done, how is, I'm making her sound like she was a, a nun just, or something. Yeah, yeah. No, she, I mean, she has experiences, but it's, it's, uh, a lot of her friends are, not her friends. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really ruining this. <laughs> this is good, though. I can't wait to meet her. And <laughs> talk sure. about this. I mean, it's, it's a very, uh, kind of, Cookie cutter and vanilla a lot. I mean, you know, so she's a she's a great, genuine person. And so she meets people through me a lot. And she's like, oh, man, this is wild. And I'm like, this, I've been like this for like 20 years. I mean, I was at Magic City at 14. I've seen a lot yeah, of shit. You know, different, so, different so it's different. like she has a lot of nuanced experiences with me where it's very eye opening. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, like yeah, kind yeah. Of events and festivals and, and travel. I'm like, we're going to go do this. And she's like, I never thought I would, you yeah, know, and good. So I'm like, sure this she is a Tuesday. It. She yeah. probably loves it. Yeah, I mean, she 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 does, she does. Yeah, but, I and man, and, I'm gonna get in trouble. She's no, ah, fuck that. <laughs> and so I I really believe that. Well, you have to eat some pussy now. <laughs> <laughs> no matter no matter what time of the month it is, I'm just to... shut up. Do it. <laughs> Worst things. Uh, but I, but I do believe the people that are different, you know, that they complement each other. I mean, that yeah. that opposites attract is not technically true, but. Too much alike is they're boring. They're boring. They drive each other boring. crazy and that kind of thing. So I mean, she's a little younger than me, and she grew up so different that I do think it's it's uh, there's always something new. Her biggest thing is she'll say it, you know, way too much. I'm like, shut up. But she, scorpions, like she hates the. Oh yeah. And I'm like, she, you know, she treats them like they're just, you know, size of an iPhone 16, and I'm like, they're they they an inch. Well, the little ones are the more dangerous ones. I mean, yeah, they hurt more. I mean, I've, oh. I've been stung. Like yeah. I've been stung, and it's you know, it's a bee sting. But she's like, I mean, she treats it like it's. The, I mean, yeah, it's like it's, the rock got to kill. But him. the scorpion has a like a folklore attached to it, like yeah. it's going to kill you, and the giant tail comes and gets you. And the little ones are stingy. She, and our neighbors get in her head because our, our best friends, our neighbors across the street, are eighty five years old, mm. and we go drink with them two, three nights a week. Oh, how and fun! We, and we kick it like hilarious. And uh, she's like, "Well, the the uh, Linda will go." I woke up and there was a scorpion on my face. Oof. And so my girl's like wrapped the bed legs with that, that slick stuff you put on the bottom of a door so a dog can't scratch it. So she's wrapped all the furniture in this with this slick paper. And I'm like, but they old and they got a bed skirt. That's how the scorpions get up there. We don't got oh, no bed skirt. Uh, like that's that's we good. And so she bought boots for just like she only. So it's, it's so interesting how one story can set people into just spinning in oh outer space. God. Just the idea. Yeah, I love, I love her. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I look forward to meeting her. Yeah, Tom, man. Pleasure to meet you. Thank Yo, you for being here. Doc, man, it's a pleasure, Thank man. you for playing along. Boot Boys, appreciate it, man. Boot Boys, thank appreciate you guys, you. as appreciate always, and we will see you all next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.